Welcome to World History Lesson 12. Chinese Dynasties. Our lesson objectives are identify the characteristics and contributions of Chinese dynasties, identify how China interacted with foreign powers, identify important Chinese contributions to humankind, identify key geographical advantages that shaped Chinese history. China emerges. China, the largest country in the world, is located in Asia. Chinese civilization is rich in tradition and knowledge from its long history. The progressive nature of Chinese civilization became known in Europe after the explorer Marco Polo returned to Italy after he'd spent 20 years learning about the Chinese during his travels. Geography had played a very important role in the history and shaping of China. The Chinese civilizations developed along the fertile Wangqi in the north and the Yangtze River valleys in central China, allowing for plentiful farmlands. Natural barriers such as mountains, deserts, and plateaus prevented invasions on all sides of China but the north and west. The north of China is covered by the Gobi Desert and Mongolian Plateau, which is located in the region known as Mongolia. To the west lay the Taklamakan Desert and the Plateau of Tibet. Qin Dynasty Dur Towards the end of the Zhu Dynasty, a nor new warlike dynasty rose in the northwest region of what is today China. The Qin Dynasty overthrew the last of the Zhu rulers in 256 BC. They conquered the surrounding lands and unified China. By 221 BC, the Qin created a dynasty from which modern-day China takes its name. The First Emperor The Qin ruler Zheng defeated all of his rivals and declared himself Shi Huangdi, or First Emperor. Zheng reorganized the government, putting everything under his control. Nobles and rulers of small kingdoms had, mo had to move to the capital under the watchful eye of the emperor. He built new roads and required cart axles to be the same width so that the wheels ran in the same ruts on all Chinese roads. The first emperor introduced a standardized money system and replaced the diverse coins of the Zhu dynasty with Qin coins. The Chinese written si writing system was also made simpler. The government Zheng created was authoritarian or had control over the government and its people. The emperor killed, jailed, or tortured anyone who opposed his rule. Because Qin leaders believed that other ideas were dangerous to the state, they had all the literature and philosophy books from earlier dynasties destroyed, including the writings of the famous Chinese scholar Confucius. Only books on medicine and agriculture were spared. The book burnings were a form of censorship. Censorship is the control of citizens' access to public information or free speech. By destroying these writings, Qi Huangdi hoped to stop the spread of ideas that may be used to challenge his authority. The Great Wall of China In order to stop people from invading China, Qi Huangdi began the construction of the Great Wall of China, which was the greatest example of Chinese architecture. About one million peasants were forced to work on building the Great Wall. They put earth and stone into the wall that was almost 20 feet, 5 feet tall and 15 feet wide. When the Great Wall was completed, it stretched for more than 1,400 miles across China, dividing their civilized world from the nomadic bands north of the wall. The Decline of the Qin Dynasty Although Xi Wangdi transformed his country into a strong unified nation, the people were unhappy under his harsh rule and soldiers and peasants eventually rebelled. Four years after the death of Xi Wangdi in 210 BC, the Qin dynasty was overthrown. Lu Meng, an illiterate peasant leader, defeated the rival enemies and claimed the mandate of heaven. He became, began the Han dynasty, named after the river where he had been stationed when he was in the army. Lu Meng took the title Gaozu, meaning chief ancestor, and set about restoring order and justice to his empire. He abolished the harsh laws of the Qin dynasty and was a just ruler. The Chinese think of the Han years as a time of glory, unity, and peace. Han China made such tremendous advances in so many fields that the Chinese later called themselves the people of the Han. The Qin dynasty's contributions to civilization.
In order to unify China, the Qin Dynasty set up a uniform system of weights and measures and built a network of tree-lined roads and canals. The dynasty completed the Great Wall of China, which is one of the few human-made features on Earth that is visible from space. Although the Qin Dynasty under Xu Huangdi built the earlier unified wall, the wall existing today dates from the Ming Dynasty. Han Dynasty the Han Dynasty lasted about 400 years and created an empire about the size of the continental United States. The first goal of the Han Dynasty was to stop the invasion from the north. This was the only way to preserve the Chinese way of life. Their second goal was to expand China's borders. In order to establish a strong and effective government, Han rulers encouraged the return of the teachings of Confucius. Confucius was a famous Chinese philosopher from an earlier period in Chinese history. He taught that tradition and respect for authority were necessary in order to keep an orderly society. The Han rulers wanted an educated workforce that would be obedient to government authority. They began the practice of giving examinations based on the teachings of Confucius to all those interested in government jobs. These civil service exams were given to all those who wished to hold a government position. This practice resulted in the teachings of Confucius becoming a permanent part of Chinese thinking. The most famous Han emperor, Wu Di, reigned from 141 BC to 87 BC. Wu Di strengthened the government and economy. Wu Di earned the title of the warrior emperor because of his endless struggles to secure and expand China's borders. Like Gao Zhu, he chose officials from Confucian scholars. The Fall of the Han Dynasty as the Han Dynasty aged, barbarian invasions, peasant revolts, heavy taxes, and a series of weak and ineffective government leaders led to the downfall of the Han Dynasty. Over four centuries of warfare followed the end of the Han Dynasty. China was again divided into several kingdoms. These newcomers eventually became part of the Chinese civilization. During this period, Buddhism took root in China. Age of Dissension after the Han Dynasty collapsed in AD 220, China remained a divided land for nearly 400 years. Constant warfare caused great hardships for the people of China. The collapse of the Han Dynasty became, came to be known as a time of trouble because this period of history plunged China into disorder. The Han Dynasty Contributions to Civilization During the Han Dynasty, the borders of China were expanded and China became a huge united empire. A flourishing trade in silk and spices was established with Europe and other parts of Asia, with silk becoming China's most famous export. The technology of silk making was a closely guarded secret. The Silk Road became China's main route to the Western world, stretching for 2,500 miles. Caravans took silk as far west as the Roman Empire and returned with goods unavailable in China. The Chinese thought that China was the center of the world and that they were the only true civilized people of the world. They made many advances in multiple areas of learning that slowly reached Europe hundreds of years later. The Chinese invented a method of making paper from wood pulp that is still used today. Advances in medicine including diagnosing diseases, experimenting with herbal remedies, and other drugs. Some doctors explored the use of acupuncture by inserting needles under the skin to relieve pain or treat various illnesses. Han scientists wrote books on chemistry, botany, zoology, and other subjects. Astronomers measured the movements of the heavenly bodies, which helped them develop a more accurate calendar and method of keeping time. The Chinese also pioneered advanced ways of building ships, and they invented the rudder for steering. Other inventions included bronze and iron stirrups, fishing reels, wheelbarrows, suspension bridges, and chain pumps. Many of these ideas did not reach Europe for hundreds of years. Artisans made delicate jade and ivory carvings and fine ceramic figures. Bronze workers and silk makers improved on earlier techniques, setting high standards for future generations. Sweet Dynasty. At the end of the Age of Disunity, a military dictator named Yan Qian seized control of northern China and conquered southern China. He also conquered areas in the southeast and central of Asia, creating the Sui Dynasty. The emperors of the Sui Dynasty built canals to promote north-south transportation and trade between northern cities and rice-producing areas of China. 
there were only two rulers during the 30-year reign, and the greatest accomplishment of the second ruler was a Grand Canal, which cut across the center of China, connecting the Huanghe and Yangtze rivers. Tired of constantly going to war, being forced to work on the canals, rebuilding the Great Wall, and paying 10 years taxes in advance, the people rebelled against the Sui rule. The Sui dynasty's contributions to civilization. Under the Sui, the building of canals to promote trade and transportation flourished in China. The largest of these canals, known as the Grand Canal, linked together the Huanghe and the Yangtze rivers. At this time in history, this canal was the longest waterway ever built by human labor. Tang Dynasty. In the year AD 618, the Tang Dynasty came to power. Under the Tang Dynasty, China began was has been called a golden age. Tang rulers restored the Han system of an organized government throughout China. They sought only the most educated and talented officials trained in the Confucian philosophy to serve in government. They also developed standardized schools that taught the same subject matter throughout the country and helped people prepare for the civil service exams. Under the golden age of Tang rule, the government was stable, the people were prosperous, and the quality of life in China improved. During this time, the Tang dynasty forced the neighboring lands of Vietnam, Tibet, and Korea to become tributary states. Although these, these tributary states were independent, they had to acknowledge Chinese supremacy and pay tribute or send money to the Tang emperor. The Tang Dynasty's Contributions to Civilization Great achievements were made in literature and art. Chinese artisans invented a system of woodblock printing. They cut the Chinese letters onto a block of wood and using black ink pressed a sheet of paper against the inked block. With this method, the Chinese were able to make printed copies of Confucius's writings and other works of literature. Four other Chinese inventions, printing, gunpowder, mechanical clocks, and magnetic compass, originated during the Tang Dynasty and were designed to have an incredible impact on the world. Decline of the Tang Dynasty Like many dynasties in China, the Tang eventually weakened and was overthrown. Following the collapse of the Tang Dynasty, the Chinese found themselves once again fighting both internally among themselves and against external invasions. Four weak dynasties followed the Tang Dynasty. Song Dynasty, in the year AD 960, another great dynasty emerged. It became known as the Song Dynasty. The Song rulers set up their royal court in the city of Hangzhou. This dynasty gave China a long period of economic prosperity, political stability, and cultural achievement. During this time, new crops were introduced from Southeast Asia. The introduction of tea in a fast-growing rice plant strengthened China's economy and increased China's trade. The Song also started many public work projects. They built canals, seawalls, and irrigation ditches. China was very prosperous during the Song Dynasty. Artists and educators were welcomed in the cities where they taught willing students. Trade with foreign countries increased. Paper money replaced copper coins as they were in short supply. The Song capital in Hangzhou was beautiful. Palaces, shops, restaurants, and wide streets made up the city. The streets were paved and sanitation was very good. By the year 1279, the Song dynasty was overthrown. From the north, the Mongols invaded China with their armies and set up their own dynasties. But in spite of the invasions and in spite of internal warfare among the feudal lords, Chinese culture continually improved. Furthermore, Throughout this period, China managed to establish an excellent system of government based on the civil service system. The Song Dynasty's Contributions to Civilization Achievements of the Song Dynasty were many. Although gunpowder printing, mechanical clocks, and magnetic compass were invented during the Tang Dynasty, they were fully developed during the Song Dynasty. The Chinese made improvements in the sciences as well. They introduced the abacus for doing arithmetic. The abacus is still in use today. Finally, historians during the Song Dynasty wrote about actual events. Their writing was based upon fact, not folklore. Wan Dynasty of the Mongols During the last years of the Song Dynasty, a strong and well-organized group of invaders began to seize control of China. These invaders were com called Mongols and had leaders known as Khans. They were first ruled by Genghis Khan and then by his grandson, Kublai Khan, who founded the dynasty called Wan Dynasty. Fun fact, Genghis Khan's empire was built upon his military genius. It is estimated that his army killed almost 11% of the total world's population. Khan's empire would go on to cover 12 million square miles, or 0.5% of
of today's male population are his direct descendants, about 16 million men. However, Genghis Khan ex exempted the poor from taxes, encouraged literacy, and his empire had no state religion. Khan respected him and admired teachers, doctors, craftsmen, and engineers, whom he also never taxed. Many kingdoms joined his empire willingly. First, they defeated the northern Chinese emperor. Then in 1279, the Song emperor was defeated. Kublai Khan ruled the united China until 1294. The Mongols were a powerful people. At one time, they ruled China, Russia, Persia, and Central Asia. It was during the rule of Kublai Khan that Marco Polo came to China. Marco Polo was well-liked by the Mongol rulers and spent 17 years there. When he returned home, he wrote a book called A Description of the World that tells about the magnificent wealth and culture he saw in China. His writing sparked interest among Europeans in China in its products, but did not receive widespread circulation until the Renaissance and the invention of the printing press. The Wan Dynasty's Contribution to Civilization Chinese life was prosperous during Mongol rule. The Great Wall of China was completed. Kublai Khan encouraged other Mongols to learn Chinese ways. He established extensive postal, road, and canal networks and developed trade with the West. The Chinese products of gunpowder, porcelain, and playing cards were introduced to Europe. Kublai Khan also built hospitals, fed the poor, kept food supplies in case of famine, and ran an efficient government. Ming Dynasty Many Chinese resented the Mongols and considered them to be barbarian invaders. Despite the gains made during the Wan Dynasty, the Chinese people were angry at being ruled by outsiders. After Kublai Khan's death in 1294, the Mongol Empire declined in strength to repeated Chinese challenges. In the year 1368, the Mongols were finally defeated. Beijing was captured and a new dynasty was created, called the Ming Dynasty. Once again, the Chinese were ruled by their own people. Ming rulers wanted to assert Chinese greatness after many years of foreign rule. Lesser powers in East Asia were forced to pay money and goods to, as tribute to Ming leaders in return for their protection. One of the Ming Dynasty's goals was to restore Chinese culture to its former prominence. The Ming restored the ci civil service exams and the teachings of Confucius. The Ming also improved the productivity of the Chinese farmers by incorporating newly learned farming methods and fertilization techniques. Chinese cities were the center of many different industries. The Ming Dynasty naval and merchant fleets sailed to many parts of Asia and Africa. These voyages helped promote an interest in trade with China. China's influence spread throughout parts of Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and Asia. It was also during this period that European European traders came to China as well. Then the Ming rulers began to isolate their country from the rest of the world. Chinese ships were forbidden to travel the open seas. When the voyages ended, so did China's contact with the outside world. The ending of commerce and travel started a long period of decline in Chinese influence in the world. In the 1600s, rebellions and invasions led to the overthrow of the Ming dynasty. A nomadic people known as the Manchu set up their own dynasty. The Ming Dynasty's Contributions to Civilization Under the Ming Dynasty, art and literature flourished. In the arts, the Ming Dynasty developed its own style of landscape, painting, and created beautiful blue and white porcelain vases. Porcelain is shiny hard poetry heated at high temperatures. Ming Dynasty pottery is still considered among the finest ever made. Chinese artists also make clonets and liqueur ware. Cloison is slender wire applied to metal and filled with brightly colored enamels. Durable liqueur ware was created by painting up to 35 thin coats of varnish on a wooden object. Writers wrote poetry and novels and were the first to write detective stories. Better methods of printing led to the production of many books. 2,000 Chinese scholars developed a huge encyclopedia of subjects that include science, medicine, art, geography, and history. One article described the practice of vaccinating against small, smallpox and uses of iodine. What's next? Take the time to go back and review the lesson on your own. After your review, complete the lesson review for the lesson and submit for grading. Remember, your submission should follow all the standard rules for st standard written English. All submissions must be written in your own words and sources used cited at the end. How to cite sources in APA format. 
When you reference a source within an APA style paper, whether it is using a direct quote, repurposing an image, or simply referring to an idea or theory, you should insert an in-text citation the author's surname, and the date of publication within parentheses, straight after a direct quote. The URL citationmachine.net will assist you in creating citations.